Hello and welcome to another episode of Bare Bones Wargaming, a show with no bells, no whistles, no frills, just a man, a camera, and his game. Alright, now I know some of you are thinking, is he back? Back in the saddle again? No, not really. Um, I just decided to do this episode, kind of like, you know, the grizzled old gunslinger who gets pulled in, like Shane, who pulled in for one more round and stuff. Um, I said I might try to do videos periodically, uh, as the spirit moved me, and the spirit did move me on this one because the game just showed up on my doorstep literally this morning that I had been looking forward to ever since I heard that VUCA uh, Simulations was going to be doing a redo, reprint of it. As you all know, PTO World War II is one of my great loves. So I thought what I'd do is since it showed up and um, it appears from what I see on Board Game Geek and such, I might be one of the first ones to have my copy, I thought I would go ahead and share with y'all. So, without further ado, oh, if you've been wondering what I've been up to, <laughs> um, been playing some games, I've been working on a design for um, the first Silesian War, also been doing a design on the Antietam campaign, both of those based on uh, for those of you who are familiar with it, the Chancellorsville 1863 system uh, from Worthington Games. I really enjoyed that, so I've been tinkering, messing around with some stuff there. And of course, spending time with my guys, uh, my little man feeding his music uh, and his robots. He's really gotten into robots lately, so he enjoys um, doing all kinds of things with them. And then my big one, my builder, as I call him, uh, I've been spending a lot of time building with him because he builds all kinds of stuff. Uh, out of wood. I bought him those neoprene rows that he used like for miniature wargaming. He builds his own cities. He draws his own cities. He comes up with his own plans for his own cities. Um, <laughs> he is quite the builder. I'm convinced he's going to be doing some architectural engineering thing someday. So, in between that, I've been playing some games here and there um, a little bit. Right now, I'm on a 16th century, or sorry, 17th century, 18th century uh, warfare run. I've been doing. Um, no Peace with Honor, the Dutch War, um, and messing around with and reading about the wars of Louis the Fourteenth. So. so, but the game I want to share with you, the one that showed up on my doorstep today, is this one. Task Force from uh, VUCA Simulations um, from Germany. Um, I do have a few of their games. Uh, as you know, I did a review uh, a few, I guess it has been almost a few years, hasn't it? of um, the Frederick the Great game they did, which was a reworking of Frederick the Great, A Dangerous Time, Oh, was Dangerous Time, I think is what that one was called, originally the Japanese version of it. So like I said, I've been looking forward to this. So I thought I would share it with you guys, since it literally showed up on my doorstep. As you can see, it is still wrapped in shrink. So, let's get that shrink off. Uh, well, we can look at the front. Nice picture. And the back. Nice layout. I like how they everything here. They have a solo suitability. Complexity is there. Oh, I forgot. Where is my pointer? I've been out of practice. Here we are. Let's put my big stubby finger down there. There we go. See? So, solitaire suitability. Complexity. All the game contents are in there. Uh, nice picture of the uh, pieces and the map. So, let's see what it actually looks like once we get down inside. And so, I hope you all been doing well. I uh, hope you all had a nice Christmas if you celebrate Christmas or if you don't if you had a nice holiday here that we've had recently some time off some almost so let's get this open and let's take a look inside not in the way that poor Sergeant Hartman would let's see if anything's missing <laughs> we're not gonna go that route but if you've seen full metal jacket you know what I'm talking about all right what do we got well first of all I will say, we got a nice sturdy box. Um, one thing VUCA does is their component quality is just through the roof, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, even look, look at this. Look at the button. Look at that. Look at that. Listen to that. I mean, it's nice and solid. That's a nice box. Of that. All right. First of all, on top, we have our books. So we'll start there. We have our rule book. Nice picture, similar to what we saw there. Oh, wow, look at this. Now, this is the way you do a rule book. Look at that. Woo. 
That is nice. Nice layout. Nice color. Nice organization. Nice columns. Uh, very cool. Uh, yeah. I like it. Very neat. Nice, easy to read font. Nice and big. The charts. You can zoom in on this one chart here. Look very cool. So, yeah, that's a that's a fine looking Roblox is what that is. And let's flip through a few other pages here. Sequence of play. Very cool. Victory conditions. Fogs of war. Or fog of war, I should say. I'm having a hard time getting a hold of pages here. So naval combat phase. Aircraft operations phase. Because of course this does have a lot of emphasis on on carrier operations. Although it does seem like there's a decent amount of surface stuff too from what I've read. So that'll be interesting to see how they blend that all together. So not a very thick rule book. It's only um, uh, less than 20 pages. So that's cool. Let's see what we got for scenario book. From what I read on the website it said there's 10, 10 scenarios all together. We start off with Pearl Harbor. Alright, nice. Sinking the Prince of Wales and the Repulse. Okay, nice, easy way to get into the system. I like that. Very cool. And if you just want to play a quick game sometimes, see if you can beat your previous score. Battle of the Java Sea. Very cool. Which was a surface engagement, so that's kind of neat. It'll introduce the surface aspects of things. Very cool indeed. And again, let I me mean, notice the color. Notice the quality. Um, it's just it's really nice. Carrier versus Carrier. Fictional one. All right. Coral Sea, excellent. Midway, of course, always Midway. You always have to have Midway. The original game, as I recall, had like a dozen scenarios. Battle of the Eastern Solomons, which I've always liked and I now have a more special place in my heart because the 24th is one of my boy's birthdays. Easy to remember, right? And another combined fleet versus Pacific fleet. Another fictional one, Indian Ocean Raid. Oh, cool. That's one of the things that, you know, it's hard to find. I found a game recently um, that I was trying that did the Indian Ocean Raid. This one here is, is more of a fictional one, I guess. But still, that's kind of cool that, you know, you have the option here um, of this Indian Ocean Raid. So that is neat. I like that, too. Oh, Scenario 10. Oh, Battle of Santa Cruz and Second Naval Battle of Guadalcanal. Whoa. Very cool neat and I believe that's the last scenario oh no I was wrong there's Solomon Islands this is a custom scenario and then creating new scenarios oh that's neat so it shows you how to make your own scenarios if you want to do some hypothetical stuff very cool alternate orders of battle for the Coral Sea for Midway that's very neat I like it the Indian Ocean Raid one is in here yeah Again, I'm having a hard time with getting a hold of the pages here today. I don't know why. And, whoops, I skipped the page. Some strategies and tactics. Blind games with two boards. Oh, that's cool. So they give you even optional rules for that. Very cool. All right. Let's take a look at the components. There's our dice. I mean, standard dice. You know how that is. Oh, let's see. What do we got here? All right. We got our time chart here for first and second day, 0600, nighttime, how many hexes returning people do not return to cup, um, chits used, oh, chit pool, okay, cool. So that's neat. And now here come the counters. We got some search markers. We've got the victorious, looks like the British order of battles here. There's the Exeter, the formidable, yeah, so but nice and sharp. Let's see what's on this one. This one here. Oh, we got Battleship Row on this one. Here we've got the Arizona, the California, Maryland, North Carolina, Oklahoma, all those guys there. Again, very nice, very sharp colors. Um, let's see, damage side. The damage side looks very similar to the front side, though. Hmm. Except for lesser numbers. Hmm. 
I usually like a nice clear stripe because I thought maybe this middle stripe here was the difference but when I first flipped it over but as you can see it's on both sides I don't unless you guys see something I don't see anything that really is distinguishing let's just focus on the Pennsylvania here no just lesser numbers really well I guess there's this little X you probably can't see it let me zoom in there is this little um, X here on the damaged side so like if you see here with the Washington right next to the BB designation there's this little X it's kind of small though um, for something bigger something easier to catch the eye but still very nice counters so I mean you know kudos for that can't argue about that one and of course we have other counters here we have cruisers so there's definitely surface warfare here going to be covered with all this and these rolls there's ones for air bases uh, ah here comes of course the Japanese the Akagi, the Kaga, the Hiryu, Soryu, Zwikaku, Shokoku, all that good stuff. Got our airplanes, TBDs, Wildcats, some more planes here. We got Val dive bombers, Kates, got Zeros, my hero. Oh, that's something else. Alright, lots of counter sheets here. There's about 500, a little more than 500 counters in this sheet. So that, this game rather, so that's, that's very cool. All those counters. All right, very neat. Now we get into the map sheets, and they are sheets, but um, wow, they got nice stock on them. They got a nice thickness. I don't know if that really will show up that well. Um, they got a nice feel to them too. There's the Hurl Harbor one. So you got Ford Island. You will need a piece of plexiglass, at least in my humble opinion, you would. So there's that one. Oh. There is a mounted map board for the Battle of the Java Sea. Interesting. So both map sheet and mounted map board. Huh. Okay. Very cool. Yeah, I was wondering about that because it did say map sheets on the box. But then I was like, gosh, this feels kind of heavy just to be map sheets. So maybe it is more than that. One thing I'm impressed with VUCA, though, too, is their, their player aid cards. Look how thick that is. That is really thick. So here's the scenario cards for setting up, scenarios one through three, and then we have scenarios four and five for setup, and again another nice thick one, scenario six and seven, very cool. I was kind of kidding around on Board Game Geek that once, now that this has showed up today, once I get done with the Wars of the Sun King, I'll have to go back and fight the rising sun once I'm done with that so again here's another setup card looking very cool nice and thick very sturdy alternate orders of battle basically all the major stuff in the rule book you can find here for orders of battle and things like that so that's neat it's very cool and then here's the the Japanese ones same quality visually easy to tell what the Japanese are with those red stripes there and those red markings. Very cool. Okay, here's another player's aid. The combat results. You got your naval combat chart, aerial combat chart, air to surface, anti-air, recon chip results. Interesting. Okay. Total victory points, recon hexes per base or ship. Very cool. Got two of those, one for each player. And on the other side, we have a breakdown of the different types of ships, aircraft, even the B-17s on here. Very cool. Difference in day and night. Very, very cool. It's nicely organized. We're not done yet either. I'm about halfway through the box. Okay, oh, here we go. Here is land base sheet. So for your land bases, raid that's placed on the map. Landing from cap, landing from the map, ready, cap, reserve. This reminds me a lot of Carrier, for those of you who played that on Game for Victory games like I have. And on the back, that's neat. Like that. Now this one's mounted. So this is a fleet sheet. This must be for double, I mean, I guess you can use this double blind play too by the looks of things. Um, 
because these are all task force ones you can see u.s fleet task force there you got task force one through six that you can build caps raid boxes landing you place the aircraft carrier in the middle very cool all right like that too that is neat same kind of thing on the back except a little bigger this time got the same kind of thing for the ijn same idea okay then further down in the box whoa cool so it looks like there's two more maps everybody and they are both mounted so there we go we've got there is the Solomon Islands so you can climb the ladder if you want from there's Henderson Field there's Bougainville New Georgia all that stuff very cool reinforcements space there showing where the IGN come in USN comes in very cool I don't think these are double sided but oh no I'm wrong they are double sided very cool here's Midway there's the Midway map which of course you know you imagine there's nothing but water pretty much on that but um, I'm gonna come back a little bit more if I can it's a little bit hard here these maps are their maps are nice and big too as well so very cool and one more map this one has what do we got um, oh of course we've got New Guinea New Britain Battle of the Coral Sea very cool so we got all this area through here Very neat. I like it. There's for bowl. Very cool. So that's Coral Sea. And again, it's very clear. I like the color stands out nice. I like the way the islands look too. They're very realistic looking. And on the other side, we have oh, the hypothetical combined fleet. The fictional um, combined fleet battle. So, so that's it. There you have it. So that's cool. So there are three double-sided mounted map boards and then there's the map sheet so hold a second we didn't really look at the back of that one did we because i didn't realize it was it was double-sided so we have the java c on the one side up oh, and the other side sorry about that so we'll go back and look again is the sinking of the prince of wales and the repulse all right pretty cool everybody that is a lot in the box um a lot there going on but again you know the rule book is not very long the rule book's less than 20 pages so and i've had good success with vuka's rule books before i mean vuka i have the frederick game i also have um across the bug and the donner schlag which admittedly i've only kind of read those rule books and looked at them a little bit because i haven't been on the east front run for a long time um you know it'll all come back again of course i'm um, not to sound like celine dion but um who should have been on that singers list but anyway, i digress um, I mean, you know, this may not be your cup of tea, but the woman can sing. So, anyway, <laughs> like I said, I've been doing a lot of, um, did 30 years war games. I've been playing a lot of horse and musket lately, all that kind of stuff. So, but anyway, that is what inside, inside the box. And I have to admit, when I pre-ordered this and it said early 2023, now, like most war gamers, I was thinking, oh, okay, March, April. And then all of a sudden I got an email the other day being like, hey, it's shipping. I'm like, whoa. Really? Shipping January 3rd? And then I got an email, which I didn't even realize until I came home and saw this on my front porch, that was like, your package is out for delivery. I'm like, really? So, very impressed um, with VUCA. They really have done a nice job uh, with their games. Uh, they're off to a nice start, in my opinion, as a company. I've been pleased uh, with all the products they've made so far. And I am definitely looking forward to getting this on the table, as you all know. Um, but again, you know, replays, stuff like that is just not really feasible for me. I just don't have the chunks of time uh, to do it. So, but like I said, uh, I was very excited about this. I've been looking forward to this ever since it was announced. So I thought I would share with you all what's inside the box. Um, so, there you have it. Um, I did make a list, but I didn't make a video of my best and worst new to me for 2022 um i mean i could do it 
Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll leave it up to you guys. So if you're interested in seeing that list, uh, put it in the comments section. And if enough people would like to see what my list was for last year, uh, I'll go ahead and find the time and shoot that video sometime in the near future. And I'll try to put together a list of most anticipated games for this year, uh, for 2023 as well. Uh, because again, those are the kind of videos that I can do pretty quick uh, without you know a whole lot of time and hassle and stuff and uh, try to get done while the kids and my wife are already in bed and gone and I can grab a quick time to do it before I need to head off to bed too. All right, so um, thank you for sticking around. For those of you I know some of you the subscribers have stayed pretty much the same, so I do appreciate that. I hope the old content is helping a lot of you. Uh, and giving you assistance where you need it. Uh, I do check the old content, so if you have questions and things, feel free to leave them, and I will do my best to answer them in a timely manner. So, I'm going to holster my gun here again, and uh, ride off into the sunset. Shane! Sorry. <laughs> but, by the way, Shane is a great movie if you've never seen Shane. It's really, really good. It's, it's worth it, especially if you like westerns. Even if you don't like westerns, and I'm not a big western guy, you should watch Shane at least once. It is definitely worth it. As always, this is Tim Korshner from Bare Bones Wargaming saying thanks for watching. And again, if you're interested in um, my best and worst new to me for 2022, please leave a comment. Anything to the effect of saying, you know, I'd like to see it or yes, please, or, you know, whatever. I will see what I can do. All right. As always, I do appreciate you guys uh, watching and hanging around, even if the videos are going to be more sporadic, because it's been, what, six months, seven months, I think? At least six months. No, maybe seven. Six, seven months. It's been probably six, seven months since I last did a video, so. But I'll see what I can do um, in the future. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you sometime.